Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to draw this mountain scene in the Lean Claire or Tintin comic book style in Illustrator CC. Now it's really easy to do. Uh, I'm going to show you how to draw these mountains, some of the shading and some of the little tips and tricks to make your image pop a bit more. Uh, with that, let's, uh, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start with a artboard that's 1920 by 800 pixels and we're only going to use five colors in one gradient. You need to use a blue for your sky. I want to use a dark purple for some of the dark areas, a lighter purple for some of the areas that are shaded a bit in the mountains. We're going to use an off white for most of the scene and most of the mountains, a kind of tan brown for our rocks, and then you need to make a gradient from a white to a blue. You can use this white to this sky blue right here. And it has to be from the light to the top to the dark at the bottom, just like that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that also these colors that you have right here, make these boxes with these colors, that they all have a stroke of three. Good. Now we're gonna press M and we're gonna create our background like this. We press I and we're gonna apply the blue color. Okay, good. Now we're gonna use the pencil tool to create our first uh, foreground settings. So I can press N or I can double click right here on the pencils tool. And the first thing you need to do, you need to move this slider right here to about, mm, maybe about the middle right there in the fidelity for the first step and press okay. Good, now if a stroke of three, you're gonna click on the outside of the artboard and hold while you make kind of like a little hill, a little series of hills in the foreground like this. And what's important is that you always end your lines outside of the artboard when you draw this foreground. Now we're gonna draw the next series of hills, which is also pretty simple. And here, we're gonna switch this to a bit right there. So we'll make it a bit rougher. I'm gonna start right about here. Rough, 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 rough. And then, okay, now this is our foreground. Make it another hill, just like that. It's gonna be a bit rough, like that, and like that. Good, now you see this line is a bit rougher than that one. Okay, now, again, we're gonna use our pencil tool, double click on this, and switch it to accurate. So now, every single little squiggle and rock that you draw is going to be preserved. Now we're gonna frame our picture. So the image is like a valley. You're looking through a valley into some mountains. So we're gonna draw the walls of the valley. So we're gonna start on the outside of the artboard, right about here, and draw kind of a squiggly slanted line right over here like this, that kind of bends and overlaps. Make sure this line starts on the outside and overlaps this line right here. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we'll start out here, draw a squiggly, a bit rough, and it goes like that. Okay, good. So now we're gonna draw our mountains in the space right here. We're gonna press N, make sure that again, you're on accurate fidelity, because it's gonna be a bit rough. And every single line that you draw right here, it has to intersect with another line. This is super important. Okay, so we're gonna start by drawing our mountains right here. So we're gonna click, and you can draw this any way that you like, but I'm gonna show you some little tips and tricks that help me. So you want your mountains to be different sizes, to be a bit valleys, that they can grow over time like this. In the middle, we're gonna have a big, big mountain like that. So, and then a coal. Have another mountain like that. I'm gonna bring it down a bit like this. And right at the end, another squiggly mountain like that. Okay, and make sure this line passes this line right here. Okay, that's the frame of our mountains. Now, we're gonna press N again, and we're gonna start adding some details to some of these mountains. So from this mountain, for instance, I'm gonna start on the outside, and I'm going to draw a ridge that moves down the mountain. And it moves right across the entire frame, just like this. And make sure it crosses this line right there. Now, having done that, I'm going to start up here, and make another kind of U-shape towards this direction, like this. Just like this, and make sure it overlaps as well. Then I'm going to draw a line that connects right to here and right to here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade this area dark color 
this is going to be a lighter color, and this is going to be our white for our mountain. Now over here, we're going to continue and do a little dark patch like this. So those lines over overlap. And again, make sure these lines overlap. It's super important. Okay. I'm also going to outline this area right here like that. So this looks like it's going to be a mountain that's peeking out from behind. We're going to do the same with over here kind of draw like a ridge. So this looks like this is a continuation ridge and this is a mountain that peaks in behind like that. From here, we're gonna draw a line that kind of moves downwards and then splits into here like this. So this gives some interesting uh, context to the center of our image. And where it splits, right here, I'm gonna draw another line and make it go that way, like that. Good. This peak right here, we're gonna draw it going out and curving out into the distance like that. Good. And what else are we gonna do? Let's draw some more details right about here. So we're gonna draw a kind of darker patch, make it all squiggly like this. Make sure those lines go over. And I'm just gonna double check, make sure, yeah, those lines go over, those lines go over. And I draw up here, and exactly, this line hadn't gone over. Good. All right. Now, I'm gonna actually add some more mountain features right over here. So we're gonna draw some patches that kind of follow like this. And we're gonna make these dark colored in the future, like that. Add another patch that kind of follows like that. Kind of make like a dark color that would be glaciers you'll see in a moment. I know it's a bit difficult to visualize visualize like this, but it will make sense once we start coloring these uh, these patches in. And we're gonna make some also some little lighter patches in there. Actually, no, I don't want to make a bad patch right there. We're gonna make one right here. So this is gonna be a little dark patch in here. Draw like that. And what else? Uh, let's have uh, this feature going down like that. So you can draw some kind of closed circles in here. If they're closed, they don't need to overlap with something. But if it's just a line, it always needs to overlap. So I'll draw another feature like this. And I'm gonna draw a mountain in the distance that goes quite up like that. Okay, good. Um, let's keep going. Add some more little details. A teardrop shape right here. I know this is a big white space right here, but uh, we don't have to worry too much about that because we do have some interesting stuff going on in the background. Mm, let's let's see, where do we have? That'll be a dark area, that'll be a dark area. That'll be a bit darker. We can add a line from here. This will be light. We can do it like this like that like that that'll cause some issues but we can correct that in a moment okay so now we have most of our mountains done let's move on to making the rocks it's real so really simple we're going to draw the rocks again in the foreground by just making kind of little squiggly sharp edges you don't want rounded edges like this you want to make small little bumps make sure that these lines overlap that's also very important again little squiggles like that you want to make them different sizes as well, of course. I'm going to add a big one over here. Like that that goes out of frame. That's good. And I'm going to make one just over here to kind of break this pattern that we'll see over here. On this side, we're going to draw a rock. Actually, we're going to draw another line that kind of goes up like this. And then here, we're gonna draw some features that cut it like that. So this will be a rock right here, right here. And again, it will be another rock over top of it, moving down. So this seems like kind of a rocky base. I know this seems super squiggly, it doesn't really make much sense, but it, it will in a moment. Okay, again, more rocks. Let's do some small features like that. And I think 
that's enough for now. We can make some small rocks individually, but we can do this also after, it's not so important. Again, to make just small rocks, do small little circles, make them different shapes. It's not so important. Like that, and we can do this after. Okay, good. Now having all, having drawn the scene effectively, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the entire scene, make sure you select all of the lines together, and we're gonna go to Pathfinder, and we're gonna press divide, and then we're gonna use trim. And if this works perfectly, there shouldn't be any straight lines anywhere. And if there is, we're gonna fix it. I'll show you how to fix it. So let's press divide. Good, everything's good. Now we press trim. And it looks like all of our major lines have been saved. That's exactly what we want. If it turns out you have now a straight line, just press Control Z, zoom in, and make sure that a line, that line, originally cuts another line. That's super important. Otherwise, trim will just remove it completely. So that seemed to work. Good. Now we're going to click our image, right click, ungroup, and we're going to start applying our colors. Okay, the first thing, let's color the foreground. So I'm just going to select my foreground color, this white to blue, press I, hold Alt, and click on our shape right here, and do the same on the shape right here. Now I'm going to select this, press G, and of course it's rotated the wrong direction. You know this. So we're going to go to gradient, we're going to rotate it by minus 90, and there, that looks good. Do the same thing here, go to gradient, rotate by minus 90, and there we go. So that's the right colors there. Now let's color our rocks. So select this, press I, and start filling in our little, oops, our little rocks like this. So I'm holding Alt when I'm clicking. Duck, duck, duck. Okay, so now we're starting to get color. Looking a bit more interesting. Okay, now let's start coloring our mountains. Mountains are pretty simple. We're gonna use our white as our base color. Press I, hold Alt, click on these large areas that we see right here, just like this. Now we're gonna use our dark color, our dark purple, and we're gonna fill in, oops, and we're gonna fill in these spaces right here. So the dark areas in the background, we want those to be our dark colors. And also these faces right here that are facing to the left, and these little teardrop shapes, just like this. I'm also gonna color this area and this area. So every mountain you can kind of think of having three sides, one of them is white, the far side is dark, and then using this color right here, well, that fits the other side, just like that. And use a little purple color like this. Give it a purple color, purple color like that. Okay, so this one I don't really like that much, so actually I'm just gonna, oops. I am just going to take the color from there, like that. So that's all right too, no worries. Make sure that we fill in all the colors, press I. Okay, good, so that fills it most of the most of the detail. Um, this is finding a tiny bit too blue. So I'm just gonna move this, kind of like that, good. And same deal here, just move that down a bit. Okay, cool. Now let's add a bit of detail to the rocks. Again, really simple, press N. Make sure that you're still on a stroke of three. And from here, you can add some little cracks. By holding right to here, making a big crack that goes down like this. Now I'm just pressing V and N so I don't modify the line that I just drew. If I draw far away from it, it doesn't matter. But if I draw close, of it, close to it, I'm gonna modify the path. So make these little cracks like that good and we're going to draw some kind of shape like that so it looks like there's multiple rocks and again from here like this draw some little lines like that like that okay so from afar it actually looks like kind of a fractured rock that's exactly the feature that we're looking for same deal with right here. We can just add another shape on the inside. Scraggly. Don't worry about closing these little paths, they'll look fine. In the small shapes, all you have to do is draw little lines. Now give it a bit more depth. Like that. Split that in two. That's all right there. Here I'm gonna break this into a couple pieces. Really simple stuff. 
everything's working out really great. That, there, some little lines, really some stuff. And again, this line doesn't close right there, but it doesn't matter because you're gonna be seeing this from afar and it looks absolutely fine from, from afar like that. In here, you want these lines to kind of follow the direction of your rock. So you can close them like this, go right here. Maybe make a small circle right here so it looks like it's built like that. And just little effects like that. Some small lines like that. To add a bit more detail, you can add some small little scraggly rocks around here. You might have to oops, apply it to those shapes like that. But that's the basic premise. It's actually quite easy to, to do this as you as you see right here. Now, the last thing that we want to do, of course, you can add more rocks, you can add more features like that, but I want to show you just how to how to do this quite easily. The last thing that you want to do to give it that kind of comic book style effect, you know, what? I'm going to draw some more rocks here because I kind of don't like it. <laughs> Let's do this. It goes off into the distance and it's going to go like this. That there we go. Just didn't like that. Uh, just white space right there. Wasn't pleasing. Go right to there. That. There you go. All right. That looks a bit, uh, a bit better. Draw some lines. Amazing. You add three lines and it looks a lot more natural. Easy to do. Okay. The last thing that we want to do to finish this tutorial off is we're gonna draw a square over top of this entire image. So we're gonna click right here, we press M, drag it across your entire image like that. We are going to give it a white color, like this. Select it, I want it an opacity to have about of 20. So it kind of mutes the background color just slightly. And having done that, we're gonna do one final thing. We're gonna to go to effect, we're gonna to go to texture, and grain and wait for the screen to load okay and i want you to apply a stippled grain type that gives this kind of little stippled pattern of course with an intensity of around 60 and a contrast of about 60. that's a good happy medium for this we'll press ok give it a moment it's going to apply it da -da 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 -da. and there you go and now you have this kind of stippled effect if you kind of zoom it. So it kind of looks like it's been printed on a piece of paper. It's a bit older. And that's all there is to designing the scene. It's really simple. So you can make this in any kind of way. Just remember your mountains in the distance should be kind of a darker purple. You should have one face that's colored in one direction, the other face that's colored a bit darker. These features act as glaciers. But again, it's there's no rules to this. Apply it as you wish. Just make sure that when you're drawing it, your pencil is on the accurate because generally the style has quite jagged lines and it's a bit difficult to do this unless you have a pencil or a pen. It's difficult to do this with a mouse, but as you see, it is possible. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Uh, check out our other videos, subscribe, like, uh, comment if you want to see more or if you have any questions. And of course, as always, have a great day.